So thanks for joining this webinar on Smart Caller ID with uh, Practice Web. And it's a great topic on how to really maximize the impact that your patient calls have and how to really boost revenue on those patient calls. Uh, patient calls are always tricky. You want to uh, either if it's an incoming call, you want to answer the questions that the patient has. But at the same time, just figure out what is uh, the current state of affairs with that patient and try to get them into your workflow uh, and office flow. And if you're doing an outgoing call, you also want to be able to have all of the critical information at your fingertips to review while you're talking with the patient. So this is a great tool that will really help you um, kind of accomplish all of that. So I wanted to start out by presenting this really important thought, which is uh, every time a patient calls or you call a patient, you have an opportunity and a choice. And the question is, what choice are you making? Uh, sometimes we're not really conscious of that choice, um, but uh, uh, preferably you would be conscious of what choice you're making and how you're maximizing any opportunities presented uh, when a patient calls or when you call out to a patient. So the one one aspect that we wanted to cover to begin with is what is the current state of affairs without uh, smart caller ID? So we have some missed opportunities um, and those are coming from the fact that you don't have those quote unquote money making details at your fingertips when you're on a patient call, especially when it's an incoming call because you're not expecting that call. And so you're playing catch up as you're trying to understand what their question is and then try to do any follow up you can with the patient on that call. So you have some missed opportunities such as recalls. Uh, maybe they don't have this recall scheduled. Uh, insurance benefits, um, perhaps they're leaving some of those on the table and you want them to maximize their benefits. Outstanding treatment that you've planned for the patient as well as account balances and getting them caught up on uh, any outstanding payments. Another aspect is that you have information overload. So you may remember that I should check on uh, these different aspects when you're on the call with the patient, but then you have to now go into practice web, find that information, get to the right module and pinpoint that data. And sometimes you can find it. Sometimes you can't, uh, you may need to put the patient on hold to really find that data. And that's if they have the time to hold, sometimes they might be in a rush and don't have, uh, more than 30 to 60 seconds to speak with you. So that there's an information overload, um, problem. Another thing is that we are flying blind in a sense because we won't know the patient's true insurance status when they're calling in or when we're calling out because we don't have that real-time verification without small, smart caller ID. Or if we do, then it's going to be something that you have to go in and get to that module and, and manually do that. So uh, you are in a sense flying blind when um, dealing with uh, the, the patient calls and, and insurance. The fourth problem is that you may have some clerical errors where, uh, especially if there's a language barrier, you may misinterpret the patient, what they're saying, um, who they are, and you might end up opening the wrong record or doing something where there's a clerical error and you have to uh, fix that on the call. Lastly, you'll have missed calls, which is always uh, a challenge. And depending on how many people you have in the office, you might have missed calls during your office hours uh, but certainly after your office hours, you'll have that those missed calls. And so the follow-up is really critical. Uh, a lot of those calls could be from new potential patients, and some of them might be from existing patients. So you want to really be able to track that and have a very efficient follow-up process on your missed calls. But right now, that's a really big problem. So these are the five problems that uh, we're looking to solve for your office with Smart Caller ID. And if we're able to solve that, then you will see a dramatic um, kind of boost to your production revenue. And also your patient communication will just get uh, tremendously better than what it is right now. So moving to that, we want to share three major points about Smart Caller ID. And we're going to do a great demo here on the webinar to show you this in action. But number one, Smart Caller ID is going to be instantly showing you actionable money-making info um, and, and other critical info like the types I've mentioned earlier, which are recalls, insurance benefits, outstanding treatment, account balances, um, collections, how much money you have collected from this patient, referrals they've made or haven't made, um, et cetera. So there's a lot of 
um, actionable information you will be presented as soon as a patient calls in. Or when you, you call a patient out, you can use the same smart caller ID to have that at your fingertips, depending on which way the conversation goes. The next thing is we do have real-time insurance verification that uh, there's a two pronged approach. So it's in one sense, it's automatic. It will, you can set a task. It could be the morning of, it could be the day before, it could be a few days before. You can set a task uh, through Smart Caller ID to automatically check insurance status of appointments on any given upcoming appointment day. And so you will be able to come in and see, okay, these are all verified with insurance or these are not verified uh, or they seem to have different benefits than what we thought and you can deal with that situation. But now uh, some uh, this system is automatically going in there and doing that work for you, which saves a lot of time. You can also do single click on-demand verification. So if you wanna verify some uh, patient's uh, status uh, on demand, then you can do that as well along with the automated feature. And we're gonna show you an example of that. Uh, and the last thing is call logs. So the call logs are going to be tracking the missed calls from your new and existing patients. It's gonna tie back to the patient record and figure out exactly who's calling. Um, and then you'll see how we're able to do very quick follow-up tasks. If you can't call them right away, you can set up a task to do that and assign it to different people in your office. You can review the communications history uh, from the call log to see what the history of, is with that patient if it's an existing patient and you can uh, also do an outgoing call right from that call log to the patient so a lot of great aspects to the call logs as well so with that being said i'm going to uh, jump right into um, us demoing the the features to you okay so i wanted to first give a quick overview of smart caller id how it works, what it displays, what what information it gives you on phone calls. So let's pull up that uh, dashboard for Smart Caller ID. Okay, so this is an ex uh, just an example of this dashboard, and we're going to run through a few real life scenarios how this will work. But just to give you an overview, you'll see at the top all the patient information. Uh, if the patient has a photo, then it'll be displayed there. You also will know um, in general whether this patient it has a different language preference and so that'll be presented at the top section of uh, this dashboard um, and then you'll see we're going to cover the feature of writing notes which will get saved to your com log for that patient um, in a bit uh, but that is the the section you see there near the top and then below that you'll see eight panels and each of those panels presents some critical information so the first one the top left is appointments. So if, if the patient has upcoming appointments or if you wanna look at their appointments history, you can see that and hover over um, that panel. Below that, there's an insurance section. So that will be uh, tied back to that real-time insurance verification and we're going to demo that in a little bit. Uh, below that, you'll have a family section where you'll see any collections you've had from this patient uh, in the previous appointments, previous treatment. The fourth panel on that left side is relating to referrals. So uh, you'll see whether or not this patient has referred other patients to your practice and you can uh, encourage them based on that situation. Uh, on the top right, the fifth panel, uh, or the first panel on the top right, you'll see the recall section. And so that will show whether or not this patient has a recall scheduled with your practice. Uh, and if you hover over as we're doing here, you'll see what recalls um, are there for this patient and the due dates uh, for them. But if it's empty like it is now, that means the recall has not been scheduled for this patient. The next panel on the right, which uh, is showing you the treatment plan. So if there's any outstanding, outstanding treatment that's been planned but not scheduled, uh, it'll show that in detail as well as the value associated with it. Uh, and then the third panel on the right is regarding account balances and it'll break it down by patient, by family member, if they have multiple family members in the account um, and what they're owing. And one thing is that we're gonna show you in the demo that you can jump and kind of dive deeper into any of these aspects if you just simply click on the panel. So we're not doing that right now, but we'll show you how to do that in a bit. And the last uh, piece of information on the right are alerts. So these are gonna be medical alerts, um, anything that you want to make sure to remind the patient about if they're calling about an upcoming appointment. Um, so that that is very convenient information for communication. So that's a quick overview of Smart Caller ID and what it's showing us. Uh, so we're gonna run through a few scenarios that will really bring it to life for us. So the first scenario is gonna be 
if you are uh, working on a patient uh, in the office, just let's say you're working on patient Sally Smith and you're in their account module looking at some of their balances, going to do some follow-up with them about, about those balances. Uh, and at the same time, another patient calls in and that's Hemesh. So Hemesh calls in, he's an existing patient and he has a question about a recent bill that he got for a previous appointment. So you answer that question for him. Uh, at the same time, you don't leave it at that. You don't hang up at that point. You use those 60 seconds to really make a big impact with this call. So what you do is you see that this patient, Hamish, has not scheduled his recall. So you want to try to get that done. Um, also, you can switch between patients. So in this case, uh, you can look at other patients and see, have they scheduled their recalls? It looks like they have not. So what we're going to do here is ask, ask Hamish, um, can you uh, work with me here and let's get your recall scheduled? It's very important to come in uh, periodically, get that cleaning, get that exam, making sure we catch any issues early on and we do preventive care. Uh, so Hemish is a reasonable patient and he understands the importance of dental hygiene. And so he agrees to that. Uh, so it's very quick to now make the recall. And so you simply will click on that recall button and you can, from here, which takes you into that recall screen and appointment screen for practice web, you can actually schedule the entire family for the recall. So you'll click on that entire family button. Um, one of them had a recall disabled, so they skipped that family member. But uh, now if you go to the appointments module, you'll see that two of the three family members are ready for recall appointments. And you can figure out during that conversation when they're available and quickly put that recall appointment on the schedule. So if we look closely here um, with the recall appointments, we have made roughly a $1,200 uh, potential production. And so that's a $1,200 phone call you just had. And really he was just calling, Hemish was calling in to ask about another bill and you're able to convert that into a $1,200 uh, production call. So this is a very quick example of how effective smart caller ID can be. Another scenario we're gonna go over is, uh, let's go back to Sally Smith and we're working on something else for her. So we're working on the family module. Maybe you need to update Sally Smith's uh, contact information. So we go over to that. Um, and while we're working on updating her contact information, another patient calls in. This time it's uh, Suresh. Uh, so he's gonna call in while you're working on Sally Smith. and he calls to ask whether your office offers orthodontic treatment, um, Invisalign, et cetera. And fortunately you do offer that. So you answer his questions about that and he's gonna consider the details you've provided and, and call back about whether he wants to get that um, treatment done in the office. However, at the same time, you don't hang up the call, you use your 60 seconds again effectively and you see a couple of things here. Number one, he has some insurance benefits remaining. And this is checking in real time whether that that's accurate. So you know you can trust this information; it's accurate. So you know that he has some insurance benefits remaining. You also see on the right side that he has some treatment plans that are outstanding. So you discuss that with uh, Suresh, and you mention that you have some pending treatment. You can see just by the hover over; you don't have to go into the treatment plan. You can see what that outstanding treatment is. And it looks to be important. Um, there's some crown work that needs to be done, et cetera. So you discuss those details and you mention, hey, you, it's a great time to get this scheduled because you have these insurance benefits. Let's not leave that money on the table. Let's get you scheduled and uh, have you come in for the treatment. So he agrees to that. And now we will uh, be able to schedule um, that treatment. So we'll uh, get to that treatment, um, create the new appointment. and for Suresh, and you'll see that there's the treatment planned procedures. You'll select that, and then you'll figure out with him when is a great uh, day and time to come in. So um, we'll show you kind of the, the finish there and get that scheduled. And now you'll see that, again, this, uh, this call where he was just inquiring about orthodontic treatment turned into a $2,500 production call for you because you're able to quickly instantly check all that information, uh, insurance benefits and pending treatment. So that's an excellent phone call. Um, now we're gonna show another scenario. So we go back to Sally Smith 
and we're working in the image module, maybe we need to upload some documents that Sally provided earlier um, and get that taken care of. So we're in the image module. Another patient calls in at that time. This time it's Danny calling in. Okay, so Danny has uh, called in and she's calling in because she has an upcoming appointment and was wanting to inquire about that. So this is showing where the communication just gets so much quicker, so much better. You become more efficient in the office. You don't have to spend a lot of time searching for that key information. So Danny's calling in. Normally you wouldn't know what appointment she has. You would have to go and find that appointment in the appointments module. Here you can see um, the appointment. And if you hover over that, you'll see all the other history as well. But if you wanna quickly jump to that appointment, you can click on it and now it'll uh, bring up that appointment right on the schedule and you can answer her questions about um, what work is gonna be done. Um, and then also you'll see with Danny, if we go back, you've answered her questions here. If we go back to the dashboard for, uh, for Smart Caller ID, you'll see that there's some alerts there uh, at the bottom right. So you'll wanna hover over that. Um, and you'll see that there's some pre-medication that she needs to take before the appointment, some blood pressure medication. And so you'll remind Danny about that. Um, and also, if you go back to the appointment history and hover over that uh, top left panel, you'll see that Danny, you know, she's usually good, but there, she's broken one or two appointments in the past recently. So you want to remind her that, um, you know, please let us know as soon as you uh, are aware that if you can't come in, uh, we saw that you missed the last appointment. So we want to make sure that uh, we're able to fill your slot. If you cannot come in for any reason, please let us know. So you can give her all these different pointers and reminders as you need to. And it's, it's really just improving your patient communication. So uh, that's, a, that's another great example where you can use Smart Caller ID. Now, another uh, great situation is with referrals. So if we're going to go, let's go to Sally Smith. And that patient is a patient... Um, you know, maybe she calls in about another question she has. And so with Sally Smith, we'll see in a moment here that she doesn't have any referrals that she's made to the office. And your office, as most offices, really thrive on patient referrals. Um, so, you know, word of mouth and that kind of marketing. So we can always remind Sally and say, Sally, um, uh, I've answered your questions now. I just wanted to give you a quick reminder. The greatest form of appreciation you can give us is referring your friends and family. Please do that. And if there's any, any questions they have, uh, send them our way and we'll really take care of them like family. So you can tell Sally if you see that she hasn't been referring. On the flip side, if you see that Danny calls in and Danny is a great advocate for your practice and she's referred patients um, resulting in production of nearly $2,000. And you can see actually, if you hover over that referrals panel, um, which Hemesh will do here, then uh, you can see all the patients that uh, Danny has referred. So you can thank Danny and say, thanks for sending over Cindy and Jillian and Eric. Uh, Eric seems to be maybe a family member, but you can thank her for referring all those patients and ask her to continue. And it's usually the case that your current advocates, the current referring patients are gonna be the ones who refer more. So it's great to give that positive re-encouragement to them. So uh, referrals information is also very useful to discuss. Uh, another thing is you can check whether a patient is a valued patient in terms of production. So going back to Danny, we can see that from this family uh, panel, that this is how much production we've had from, or collections actually, this is showing actual collections. So this is how much collections we've gotten from Danny. Uh, it's it's not a, a shabby amount and there might be other patients that have a lot more than that, but um, you can see what their value is from a monetary perspective uh, to your practice. At the same time, if Danny has a, outstanding account balances, as she does here about $150, you can resolve that. So if you click on that, panel, you can jump right to her account. And while she's on the phone, uh, you can ask, you can tell her what those charges are coming from and try to get that payment secured through the payment screen. Maybe you can have her pay via credit card. If you're using our merchant card processing, you can get all of that taken care of. And if you're using our pay by text, then you can send her a, a quick text message to take care of that payment. But that will allow you to resolve balances as well during that phone call uh, using smart caller ID. So these are a few different scenarios which we wanted to present.
as a taste of what you can accomplish. And there's so much more that you can do to make those money making calls um, as opposed to money losing calls. Uh, another aspect of smart caller ID, which is really useful is documentation. So we have a lot of communications, the office is very busy. It's hard to uh, have an efficient way to document calls. And so we've made it very easy through smart caller ID. Um, so let's take this example of Danny. So again, she's called in and you discussed some account balance information with her. Um, so not only can you type notes in there manually, you can have unlimited amount of quick notes. Um, and so for example, let's say Danny couldn't pay. Um, and so she, uh, I don't know why the, uh, Hemish, why is demo written there? can read, read yeah so there you go so now you can pick the account balance pay plan uh, quick note so it may be something that happens often in the office and so you can select that you don't have to type anything you talk to the patient and put them on a uh, payment plan if they can't afford to pay, pay the entire balance right now and now you if you click that blue check mark it will go to that patient's com log so if you check their com log um, right there you'll see that this was the call when we had the call this is what was done and now it's all documented if you ever need to go back and look at that communications history so this is a great aspect of smart caller id um, you can set up as i said as many quick notes as you want if we go back to that smart caller id we can see another just another quick example of a quick note there um, so let's say so go to that select template drop down and let's choose um, paid, the account balance paid. So this would be maybe one where we discuss the account balance and you did secure payment from the patient. And so that will be now recorded in the comm log. So again, you can use this for any scenario you can think of. It could be rescheduling appointments. It could be um, looking at their treatment plans and, and anything, any common scenarios you can create quick notes for and document those calls. So. Um, la the last scenario we wanted to cover with smart caller ID before we move on to the call logs is to show what happens when a non-patient calls in and how you might be thinking, well, smart caller ID would be great for an existing patient, but what about non-patients or um, uh, new patients that call in? So there is a lot of benefit even in that scenario. What I'm going to do is simulate a phone call and act as the new patient. So I will call the office line right now and then we'll talk about how this works with new patients. So I'm calling right now, and now you'll see here, this phone number that I'm calling from is not associated with any patient, and uh, I am a new patient calling in, trying to inquire about this practice and how I can uh, come in for a cleaning and exam. So a couple things you can do here is you can check the call, uh, you can see the caller ID information. So if you click on that triangle, that green triangle, icon um, you'll see some information about uh, and it depends on the caller and so you'll get more information sometimes less than others but you'll see that this is a legitimate patient calling in and where uh, sometimes it shows a location here as well you can also click on that t icon which is a true caller id um, service that is our, we are linked with and that will show um, depending on the caller, it'll show some information there as well. So for example, I can see where they're located, their phone number, their name, you know, and sometimes it'll show more information based on the caller. So that's a, a true caller uh, service you can jump to. Now, if we go back to that dashboard, mm -hmm. another great thing that you can do is just to make your life easier, you can quickly uh, use that smart caller ID and create a new patient. So we're not gonna go through the entire process. Oh, actually, no, in this case, we will. So we're gonna create a new patient and uh, that will bring up the new patient screen, edit the info you need, the bare minimum, and then we'll just click okay. And uh, in this case, we have multiple clinics, so we'll just assign them to the right clinic. And now we have that patient entered and we can go and to the appointment screen and create an appointment, a new patient appointment for them. So we'll go to the appointment module and get them set up for a new patient appointment. And uh, yeah, any anything that you have already, um, already 
in your quick procedures, you can uh, use that in practice web. So we have the new patient appointment set up. Um, and that's one example of how the P smart caller ID will make your new patient calls more efficient. So with that being said, I wanted to move over to the call logs. And the call logs, uh, we have, as I mentioned, the problem of not being able to answer all calls because there's only so much that your team can do during office hours and, and certainly after office hours, there's no one there to answer. You may have a answering service, but this will uh, be very good because you can access this information in real time and, and, do a and have actions related to that. So it's like a 24 seven you know, employee who's recording everything for you for follow-up. So one workflow you could have is check this call log section in the evenings or in the morning when you get in or even throughout the day if you want to um, and just follow up on anything you need to there. Uh, the main grid that you see near the top will show all your received and missed calls, um, but you can narrow in on the missed ones if you want to. So um, we'll do that right now with that first drop down, or yeah, the second one, and you can click on the not not acknowledged ones, the missed calls. And there's there's two potential scenarios um, that we wanted to go over. One is if you have a missed call from an existing patient, the good thing is because it's integrated with the practice web, it will figure out if this is a new patient or an ex existing one. If it's an existing patient, you can right click on that record and do a couple of different things. You can add a task for follow-up. Maybe you can't call them right away, but you want uh, someone else in your office to do that. So you can click on that add to task. So we'll do that here. And then uh, you will have different users So uh, in your office. So let's say Ethan, um, you want Ethan to follow up. So you can put a note here, please follow up on this missed call. And also you maybe you know that um, that patient, we need to verify their insurance. So you can put that in the note as well. Anything else that you think Ethan needs to do on that phone call? So when you click that and submit, then within practice web, the task list, this will show up. So uh, we'll demo that here quickly. And so you'll see here in the task list that this has been assigned uh, to Ethan and it's um, showing all that information. So if we go back, there's another thing we can do for, there's uh, one other feature we're gonna highlight for an existing patient's missed call. And that is um, you can call out. So there's that's another feature with a single click you can call out. We're not gonna demo the phone call, but just wanted to highlight that feature for you where you can call out. Um, and there's a few other things you can do here if you need to create an appointment. Um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of other things you can do here. So uh, next scenario would be if you have a missed call from a uh, prospective or new patient. So we're going to look at incoming calls from potential patients and those that are not, so let's go to the ones that are not acknowledged because these are the ones that are. We, we don't have right now not acknowledged because we created the appointment for the patient. Oh, right, okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll just take this one. So let's take, um, if we right click here, we'll see that with, with there's a few options if it's a prospective patient. So uh, if you call them back and you realize that it is a new patient, then you can add a new patient just from here. So if you click on that, we won't go through the whole process, but you can click on that and uh, it'll ask you whether you want to add them and it, you'll do the whole process again here that we demoed earlier for adding a new patient. Um, now, if another option you have is you will be able to right click on that prospective patient's phone call. And um, let's say you call back and you find out um, that they are not a prospective patient, they're actually an existing patient, but they call from a different number and that's maybe a change number for them and they want you to add that to the record. Now you can click on existing patient, find the patient it, it is, and then you can uh, put that into their record. So it's a great way to update your records and keep them up to date. Um, another thing I wanna show is a problem with calls is sometimes you'll get spam. So this is again where that caller ID helps uh, or the, the checking the caller ID. So if you click on that uh, triangle, that green triangle icon, you can see that 
uh, you know, this looks like a legitimate. Go back to that again, Hamish. Okay. You can see that it looks like a legitimate patient um, or prospective patient, possibly. Uh, when it's a spam call, sometimes it'll give you some information about that, and you can identify that it's a spam call, and you you may not call back. So this will make sure that you're not wasting time on those callbacks. Um, so there's a couple of things that you can do from the call logs, but I also want to go over the analytics that we have on the left side. So on the left side, if we go to all calls, so let's select all calls on both of those drop downs, then you'll see a lot of uh, helpful information on the left side. You can see how many of the how many of the incoming calls are from patients, potential like a new patients that called in that day. And you can pick different dates that you want to check this information, but you can see how many new patients called in, how many existing patients, how many non-patients that you need to follow up on and figure out whether to add them as a new patient, et cetera, et cetera. So this also ties in with suppliers, contacts, other contacts you have in practice web, like your labs and other vendors that you might be dealing with. So it will track um, those contacts as well. And then in, in the activity section below, uh, in the middle of that left panel, you'll see how many were missed calls, how many were actually picked up. So you can see how well we are um, responding to those calls and making sure that you know we have enough call coverage for the the attention that we're getting in the office. So those analytics are helpful, and we're always adding more to that. So you'll see additional um, information being added to that over time. Uh, one other thing is you can check the comm log. So if we pick a patient, I believe it's um, patient Suresh. So if we pick that patient, you'll see uh, just clicking on that entry that there's, um, I think there's uh, some comm log information here, uh, maybe some pa the appointments you've created. And and uh, Hemish, do you have, I thought we had some other comm log entries for Hemish. I'm sorry, for Suresh. I Maybe think another I patient. Them less I think I deleted them. Okay, so now. if you do have, um, yeah, right here, here it is. So if you have com log entries, like maybe you've called them earlier about something, you'll see all of that at a glance here, so you don't have to go into their record to figure that out. So when you're making that callback, you'll have that information at your fingertips, along with the, um, obviously you'll have the smart caller ID as well, so you'll see that in there too. Um, now we wanted to cover our last topic, which is insurance verification. Just quickly go over how that works. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's an automated feature to that where based on the schedule you set up, whenever you want that automatic uh, verification to occur, maybe it's the day before your appointments, it will automatically go through and check all the insurance. And now when you come in, you can see on each appointment whether it's verified or not. So you'll see that V, that red V for verification. And if it's not verified, then they won't have that. So you'll need to figure out um, what's maybe their insurance changed or we need to get updated insurance information. So this will make you very confident about proceeding with those appointments um, if you're relying uh, pretty heavily on the insurance to pay a portion of that. Um, another thing you can do is manually check. If you ever need to manually check, you can just click on that appointment and pull up the smart caller ID or that page pad info icon there. And you can see here that the insurance is verified. So if we hover over that again, that panel on the left side, you'll see everything verified. So every time you click on this, it's automatically verifying the insurance. Um, so that's how insurance verification works. It's It looks very simple, but it's a huge time saver, a huge benefit to your office, and it makes sure you're going to get paid for your uh, very uh, you know big efforts that you're making on that treatment. So um, with that said, the demo portion is complete. I'm going to cover a couple of important points regarding the phone service integration and pricing. So, so this is uh, one topic we wanted to cover regarding phone service integration. Um, you may be wondering how does Smart Caller ID work because it relies on the phone service to um, catch those incoming calls and, and uh, do those outgoing calls. So you can use any digital or voice over IP phone service. There's Tons of options out there. The, some of the biggest names are Vonage and Ring Central, but there's there's a lot of options. So you can use anything for digital phone service. You may already have digital phone service. If you don't, um, you know, if you don't have one, you can get any digital service you like, which is a, at a price point that makes sense for you. But we are great at giving you some advice on that, and we can also bundle a service for a great price um, with people we worked with in the past. We've saved hundreds per month off of their existing phone bill, which is the traditional landline 
phone service non-digital. So you will, you could end up saving hundreds per month just by doing this. Um, but you have the freedom to choose any digital or voice over phone uh, phone service you want to use. So that's how it works. It's very um, clean and simple. But we, this is something that we can discuss with you further when you work with us on Smart Caller ID, and and we'll make sure to take care of you and get you set up. Uh, the the other topic, last topic, is pricing. So we do have this special running through the end of the month, which is an amazing price. Um, you may or may not know that there are some uh, other services out there which are not actually as integrated as what we just showed you, but they try to provide this type of service with a smart caller ID um, and analytics, but they are going to be much more expensive. Um, we've done the research and they're around four to $500 a month. So they're charging an arm and a leg. We're trying to keep it very low cost as we do with everything at Practice Web. So we'll give you that free trial, which most other services don't provide. So we'll give you a free trial for 30 days to make sure that this is a great service for your practice. And then we'll do a $99 a month, very low cost. Our regular price is 198. So this special is gonna save you more than $1,000 a year um, if you sign up before September 30. Uh, another thing is if you wanna do the insurance verification, it's optional. Um, some people use this, some people do not. Uh, we think it's very effective. So if you wanna add that on, it's, it's only $49 a month. And that's off our regular price of 98 a month. So you'll save another close to $600 a year. We really appreciate everyone spending their valuable time with us. And please call us uh, here at this number, 800-845-9379. If you have any more questions, we can give you any more follow-up details. You can also email us at sales at practice-web.com. And we do hope that you um, uh, really try the free trial of Smart Caller ID. And we think it can make a huge benefit to your practice. And some of these things are, you know, next level techniques that not everyone goes for, but they're really missing the boat. And these are the things that these these techniques are really going to help you get ahead of the curve and stay afloat in these difficult times. You really want to look for these advantages that you can pick up. And this is a huge advantage that you can do. And we saw how you can um, have amazing money making phone calls with uh, Smart Caller ID. And, and improve your patient communication. We look forward to working with all of you.